There All it is. All right. All right. So 1980 was a good year. Yeah, uh, we we played everything from the 70s, and we kind of breezed through because of how many games there were. But uh, mm -hmm. 1980, we've taken a month. That's a very full year. Yeah, it, it was a lot. Can't right, imagine so, what 81 is going to be like. Oh, gosh. Uh, 1981, <laughs> the last time I checked, we have about almost 1,000 games uh, in 1981. <laughs> Which is double this one. Uh, yeah, and, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be big. All right, so here we go. This is uh, the best of 1980. Thanks so much for joining me, David. This is going to be awesome. Uh, our very first game we're going to hit on is Astro Invader. And when we say the best of, this is all the games that had a four and a half star or higher rating. So we're going to start with all the four and a half star games and just get a little taste of what it's like. This is Astro Invader, and I'm just going to pop in and play. This was released June 25th, 1980, and this is by Konami. That's right, Konami. It is one of the first releases Konami ever did. All right, so the game is played where you have a ship at the top that is distributing other ships into columns and the the columns fill up and when they get high enough the the ship is going to come down and if it lands on the bottom of the screen it makes an explosion with a shock wave and if you're near the shock wave you're going to die if you let the ufo come to the bottom it creates a shock wave that goes across the entire bottom of the screen and you die so if the ufo ends up making it to the bottom it's like you're you're gonna you're gonna be instant death <laughs> <laughs> All right, because I was thinking, why don't you just stay in one area and manage that area? But then that'll make it hard to get to the UFO. That's it. Yep. Uh, okay, they thought this through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we, we've seen lots of clones of the shooter genre, and this is one of them. And uh, this is one, the reason we rated this one four and a half is because it is taking the formula like Space Invaders, but adding complexity and oh, and color. <laughs> That's another another one, another one. And play control. Uh, there's also so many different things happening at the screen. Like uh, they have all these sprites that are happening and going on at, at the same time. And then uh, uh, allowing for the the ship uh, to come, allowing the ships to come down and create this shock wave gives you the incentive. Oh, great! Like the you know the UFO's coming up, better take care of it. But then the other ones come. You want to just get out of the way. And if you're out of the way, the shock wave, you're you're safe. Because I've always felt like if I just stay here, I'm pretty safe. But I didn't think about the UFO. Yes. <laughs> and now it got me. Uh, all right. So <laughs> that that was Astro Invader. And let's move on to our next one. This is also four and a half stars. This is Berserk. The very classic, very popular Berserk. Released in the arcades November 12th, 1980 by Stern. A powerful release by A Stern. gun. Oh, it looks like this one didn't load. We have to do a different one. Give me one sec. We'll do this one. There we go. Berserk. And what was this played on? This was the arcade. Oh. So we're back in the arcade. Yeah, you can put some money in and play. Oh, and all right. The, okay, eight uh, directions. Uh, Whoa, you can't uh, touch the wall? Yes, walls are electrified. <laughs> no. Intruder alert, intruder alert. And that smiley face is not smiley. It is invincible. That is uh, evil auto. Ooh. And you have to just avoid him. <laughs> and move on to the next screen. Because this is a multi-screen game. You can actually go uh, the, in the open places. and like You can go left right now. Go ahead and go left. Whoa, and they even have a scroll. Yeah. They have a That's scroll to it. Advanced. They have talking. The robots talk to you and mock you. They just called you chicken. Fight like a <laughs> robot because you ran away. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you just score points, move room to room. You you will get harder and harder robots as you play. But the this game is rated so high because it is the first time we've ever seen this viewpoint. And a uh, Oh, there we go. Yeah, they're shooting back. <laughs> and you can put your initials in as well. <laughs> ABB. Wow. But yeah, but that was Berserk. A uh, huge All release right. for 1980. Well worth uh, the place on th this position. Mm -hmm. After that, yeah. our next game is Bill Budge's Trilogy of Games. This one almost went under the radar because we couldn't get past the, 
uh, the screen. This is on the, the Apple II, and this is a three game in one to play, and it's not games you could get anywhere else. Uh, th th these are three games all programmed for this, so it's a three in one package. Super wow. deal for the time. And this is the screen we couldn't get past. I started pushing all the keys when we were playing live, but you have to hit the break key, escape, and then you can pick the games you want. So uh, this one includes uh, Space War. And you can pick what gravity you want. It is a simulation of the uh, original mainframe game. So uh, I'll let you pick. You, you <laughs> Option one, two, three, or four. Let's do two. Two, weak gravity and boundaries. Okay, so you can see here, um, the ship is, I'll use it this way. <laughs> so there's two different ships. I wonder if your joystick is plugged in. Let me try, try that again. If, can you move yours left and right? Uh, oh, you, oh, you can. Because I don't think mine, the second player, is plugged in. And there's a... There's I a feel like there's something moving, but... The way that you play is similar to uh, kind of like Asteroids. You have a thrust uh, button and a um, a shooter button. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you fly around the screen and you attack each other and you still have to fight against the gravity uh, of the screen. I'm having trouble figuring out how to get out of this corner. With the controls for the time, this actually is pretty good for the Apple II considering, but it, it is a little tricky to get used to um, because I think it's being programmed into um, uh, the, the, the joystick and the paddle controls to play at the same time. Let me see if I have mine. Yeah, so there's only one joystick plugged in. It's not two to play a, as a two-player. But that's one of the games to play where you can fly around and shoot on an Apple II game, which already was amazing, with gravity. But then you also have, uh, is there a way to switch to a different one? Uh, it was control C, I think. Alt C. Oh, it won't let me switch. Control one. Oh, I just have to go back. Okay, so we won't, I was gonna check out all three to, uh, to look yeah. at all of them. Uh, let me try it one more time. I'll go in and get another one of them to pop up for us. And controls are a little unwieldy there. Oh yeah, it, I, I can totally understand that. And then we also have check a look. Take a look at pinball. All right. Do we want instructions? Sure. And this is oh spinners to play. Uh, T to tilt the keyboard and shoot. So I think this is going to be. Let's see if this is programmed. If we do two players, I don't think it's going to work for both of us at the same time. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, it's only going on one right now. Oh, is that? That's me. It is. Okay, sweet. So for for the time, this is one of the best physics you could have on a home computer, uh, and it's also included with three other games. <laughs> it's, it's just hanging out. <laughs> I get to play the game though. <laughs> Half the fun is watching it just bounce around. It makes me feel like oh. I picked. Oh! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, once it gets up there, it stays up there. Yeah. And then the third one included in this one is Night Driver, which is the same as the. Let's do zero difficulty. It won't go crazy yes. fast. But it's the driving game they had in the arcade. So you. You, you, it sounds like you're puttering around on a golf cart, but uh, this was incredible. Uh, so for the time, having three different games on your home computer you could play of three different genres was amazing. <laughs> 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 Crash. There cool. we go. That was the Bill Budge's trilogy of games. Next one that was a big one for us was boxing for the Intellivision. Uh, this one's awesome. Uh, check this out. When we, we pop this in, this isn't a simple boxing game. You have on the left side, when we start to play, you have a left and right punch. You can pull a punch or fake out a punch. You can duck. And then you have uh, jabs. And then you have, uh, oh yeah, pulling punches. So over on the far left side is our keyboard or our uh, keypad overlay. 
And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to start up the game with, uh, let me pull up our manual really quick. So first thing you do is you decide how, what speed do you want this game to go? Like, do you want it to be medium, fast, or slow? And then um, we want to pick a two-player game. You can see uh, it's saying what the, yeah, there we go. So we pick that first. And then uh, the title screen appears. We pick what speed we want. After we pick the speed, then we select which fighter we want. We can select the kind of fighter we want to play as. And page eight shows us out of one, two, three, four, five, six, you, you pick that fighter that you want. And then you uh, flip a, a actual coin to decide who goes first. And then you push that number on the keypad. And then you keep fighting, pushing the buttons, and then whenever the round is over, uh, uh, there's our fighters. There we go. So you can pick Pretty between cool. um, blue, red, tan, dark green, light green, yellow, and then it shows what kind of fighter they are. Are they strong in de defense, know. offensive power? So um, just from that view, go ahead and pick one, David, that you, you would want to go for. I'm probably going to go – I'll go tan. I'll be exceptional endurance. So I'll that's do dark three. green. Dark green, so you'll pick uh, number four whenever it's time. So uh -huh. uh, let's go back to, to the game. And then now we choose our men. So you pull up your virtual keypad. I'm number three. Tan versus dark green. And then uh, now we uh, select enter on the keypad, which is down with, as the E to say we're ready. And then when we're both ready, we both move our joystick at the same time. And now we're moving around, and to, to play, you pull up, yeah, you're on the keypad, you can select what kind of punch you want. That's, uh, oh, that's faking a punch, but I want to punch forward. There we go, yeah. <laughs> that's it, yep. And you can select different kinds of punches, or, oh, yeah, he's going nuts. You can duck, picking, nice. <laughs> and this is up there on our list, because this is, look at the size of the sprites. And this is a, it's a fighting game. I know it's boxing, but you get to pick which kind of fighter you want. Come on, Endurance, don't, get, don't, don't, get, don't let me down. <laughs> oh, man, he's got it. Oh, he's down. Okay, I only, I've never done this where I have to come, try to come back up. Back. Got it. Okay, I just pushed random buttons to see if I could do it. Get it, get it. Oh, I want to move down, too. You can also move using the joystick to move around the, the field, so you're playing on a three-dimensional uh, play field. So cool. <laughs> All right, so that was boxing for the I almost television. almost got you, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much better playing against you than playing against a computer, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, so our next release that we had, uh, another four and a half stars, was Crazy Climber in the arcade. Uh, this one's going to be a little interesting because the controls are a, a wonky. Uh, but I'll just boot it up to explain why this was so high. Crazy Climber did something graphically that most games we haven't seen do, which is the, the raster graphics is a higher resolution than any other game. Uh, this one's pushing uh, graphics. I don't know if oh, you can yeah. tell it from, wow. from that point. Yeah, and the, the number of colors displayed on screen or what they can have is uh, is up there. <laughs> So the way this is controlled, it's going to be tricky to map that, but um, the, the the reason we rated this so high is because it's it's doing something unique and different, and it, it's it's going to be copied. The whole climber thing ended up being being a, being a genre in the next few years. Plus, the game talks to us. Any game that talks to us in 1980, uh, we get we get high points for. <laughs> So cool. Well, figuring out how to go left and right. Yeah, it, it's it's a little so tricky. I control the left hand. But how do I control the right hand? If we if we needed to, we could remap it to something that was better. But um, oh, if you look at the bottom, if you look at the bottom of the screen, it, it's explaining what you do with the two joysticks. If we had it in the arcades, so it it is a little a, a clunky to play nowadays. But back. In 1980, this was re revolutionary, something different than the normal control scheme. And that's all we'll do for now. We're just doing a taste to uh, move on to the next one. But uh, And I know that one was your favorite, so I hate to pull you away from that one, David. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I got to play. That was it. 
All right, here we go. This one, next one is Digger. Digger was the uh, North American release of Hyunkyo Alien, which is a hugely influential game for the genre. It is a top-down maze game, but not the one you'd expect. It's no dot collecting. This one, you have one button to dig a hole and then one button to close the hole up. So I uh, go ahead and put some coins in, David, and then uh, start it up. It's uh, unique because it ended up inspiring the Load Runner series. And Load Runner was a huge hit in Japan. And because of Load Runner, we had several other games that were based on that. Because uh, right now, Dave is playing as the white guy. And the uh, aliens that are uh, traveling around are all random. They go in different directions. But you have one button to start a trap and one button to close that trap. So if you hold down the trap button, you'll open it up, keep on doing it. And when you have a full trap and an alien walks into that trap, you can now capture them. Oh, it looks like it wasn't fully open. Try it again. Try to open it all the way up. Keep going all the way. Now, it's a full trap, and you can make it as many as you want. So, yeah, make it different traps. Once it's full, then you push. Oh! <laughs> Once the trap is totally open and an alien's inside of it, he only has a few seconds to go to it and push the other button to close the trap. So, there, you have two buttons to finish closing it up. Got it. And you get 200 points for it. So it's a slight strategy game because you're having to decide where you want to put the traps. And then you have to also, since the aliens are random, there's a chance that they could come at you while you're building the trap. Or they, look at that, you had multiple that, yeah, see, and they, they can they can gang up on you. So there's, so there's fast. A, they are really fast. So there's a few strategies, like you can go in a corner and just make traps around until they come up to you. And then you have to decide when to close the trap to get the alien to, 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 to come to your space. But it's a different way of thinking for an arcade game and that's why we have it at four and a half stars it is uh something that influenced so many people in the video game industry not necessarily digger which is this release but it was the japanese release of hyankyo alien that was the big one but this is the exact same game yep there you go uh, <laughs> all right and the more you play and the farther you get it uh, it starts to become addictive because you you, you want to try to get more aliens to be trapped and capture them and if you move too far away yeah there you go you're doing you're doing pretty good there if you move too far away then you you, you can't get back to the trap in time to capture the alien oh and look oh he almost got two if you get two in once you have to decide which oh. one you want to go for and yes there is no sound emulated on this one the, the original game did have sound though and we'll go ahead and cut this one because we got a few to go through for the best of 1980. But this was Digger or Hyunkyo Alien. Oh, nice. And you're already hey. starting to get on a roll on that one. Awesome. <laughs> All right. After that, we have Dodge'em. Exceptional Dodge'em for the Atari 2600. This one has lots of different game modes. And now that I have David with me, you can play a two-player mode, which was great at the time because every other uh, version we played of head-on has been only one player, and a computer uh, plays the other uh, mode. So I'm going to take a look right. at the manual, and we'll see what game mode we have to play on this one. We want to do, yeah, uh, the two-player mode, and you can usually go back to the back of the manual, and it shows a the game variations. There we go. Game two, two-player. No, we want same time. Two players who alternately game control. Game three, then. Point scoring car and crash car. Okay, yeah, we'll try that one. All right, so uh, on your controller, uh, you got it. Yep, I think we're on it now, right? Game three. Let's see. I'm orange, I think. Yeah, it, you can only make changes on... Oh. <laughs> and we hit each other head on. There we go. Okay, so. And right now I'm playing as the enemy, as the purple car. David's playing as the green car. And uh, as he goes around, he's collecting the dots, and I'm able to control the other the, the other car. You can only make movements when you switch lanes. So you're trying. I'm trying to hit him. I think I'm the purple car. You're the one that can collect dots, so you're green. Uh, so I'm I'm the I'm the enemy. So if when you move on the intersections, you should be able to uh, collect the dots as the purple as the green car. I mean. Yeah, but I'm controlling the purple for sure. Really? Yeah. I think you're the green. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay, that, that explains why we crashed. Okay, so this now is I'm orange. 
so we swap uh, every does, time. Yeah, it goes back and forth. I see. Uh, now, so now I'm purple. They should have kept it the same color, so we'd be able to keep track. So I'm trying to crash into him before he collects all the dots. There we go. Oh, and make the quick. Yeah, it makes the quick change. Nice. And he got it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Dodgem, which a lot of people that was the first time playing head on, which uh, was first released by Sega in the arcades. Excellent Man. for 1980. After that one, oh yeah, here we go. We're gonna give David a taste of what it was like to play a role-playing game in 1980. This is Dungeon Quest Hellfire Warrior. On the channel, when we played it live, we actually didn't get it to load because you have to have the right Commodore pet uh, to play. And we should have it now. Let's see what happens when we load our game on here. And I'm gonna actually speed this sucker up. Faster, faster, faster. Oh, maybe it won't load. No. Oh. Come on, Hellfire Warrior. I believe in you. After doing fast forward, we should get it to load. Come on, Hellfire Warrior. If this one doesn't, we have another version we can play on because uh, we, we've always seen, already seen in the home computer space, not everything's guaranteed to be that way or play mm -hmm. that way. Darn. Okay, well, we'll, we'll check out the other one. It's, it's the same game, just on a different computer than the Commodore Pet. All right, so after that, our next one is The End, also for the arcades. This is a, another shooter, but it is uh, doing a few things different for what we gave it four and a half stars. We still see the star field in the background. This is another one by Konami, like our uh, Astro Warrior we played er earlier. And for this one has a mothership that you can't kill, but this one really gives points for the... <laughs> It gets points for the way that it's played. All the aliens are picking up objects that are your protection, kind of like the walls in Space Invaders. And they're building another, uh, they're actually spelling the words the end with all the pieces. So if they get all the pieces up that spells the end, then the game's over. So you're trying to kill the, the aliens before they end up spelling something at the top. I don't wish we could kill that mothership at the top, but I don't think we can. <laughs> It feels like this is just inevitable. Oh, they keep coming. What? So... Yeah, they uh... <laughs> this is also an early release. So we saw this um, uh, early in 1980 and uh, amazing uh, for the time of, of what it did. Man, but those sound effects, so much better than what we heard in the 70s. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so after the end, here we go. This is Hellfire Warrior. We'll try it on the TRS-80 and give it a shot. Okay. What was it like to play a role-playing game in 1980? Here we go. Mr. Dungeon Quest. Dungeon Quest. You have to know which command to type. There. Did I get it? Will it run? I don't know. Yes, it will. So when you play a uh, role-playing game in 1980, uh, one thing that stands out to me is you still create a character like Dungeons & Dragons. Oh, and this one happens to be in Old English. Hail and well met. Shall I find thee a goodly character? And we say, yeah. if we say yes, then it's going to just randomly give you stats for a character. If you say no, then you get to build your own. We'll just say yes, find us a character. Yeah. <laughs> and then there we go. You get your character summary. We got uh, 250 gold pieces. What's your character's name? You want to go with David? Or you want a, a, a cool role-playing name? <laughs> go with D-A-V-I. Davi. Dav Davi. <laughs> Wilt thou buy one of our fine swords? Yes. Yay. 
When you type in yes, it just is yay. So you really get I'll into do it. Short sword. Short sword. And then the other thing that's cool about role playing games in the 80s and is haggle. there is haggling. Yes. What happened to that? Because there's not haggling in most modern role playing games that I can think of. Elder Scrolls still has it. Oh, that's true. That's true. All right. So, I'll do a one. Try for one. Done. Sweet. Haggled. Half price. Wilt thou buy a shield? Yes. Yay. What sort? Small. Thine offer? Uh, one. One. Blackheart, thou takest the food from my okay, children's two. mouths. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. We'll take two. <laughs> Wilt thou buy new armor? Yes. Yay. Thy choice, sirrah. Leather. Leather. What Two. wilt thou offer? Uh, I'd not part with these fine goods for that pittance. <laughs> sure, <laughs> three. <laughs> wilt thou buy a bow? No. No. Nay. <laughs> Wouldst thou pawn forth the apothecary? Do you want to go to the yes. apothecary? Yay. All right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes. Uh, just give me one. <laughs> Elixir. Elixir. How many? Uh, four. Four. Thine offer? Nine. Uh, uh, oh. 44. What? Oh, is it four? Oh, maybe ten? they're saying I'm buying four packs of four. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. All right. 44. 44. That's fine. Done. You have okay. exactly 200. No. Will there be anything else? No. Wouldst thou stop with Malaclips the mage? Sure. Yeah. Greetings, fellow. Wouldst thou yes. <laughs> have thy weapon enchanted? Yay. T to what degree? <laughs> the first degree. One? That comes to 100. What wilt thou offer? A hundred. hundred? Gosh. It's half That's why month. I was saving up. <laughs> Buying all the basic stuff so I can enchant my stuff. Yes, enchant my armor too. Yay. To one. what degree? One. Yes, a oh. hundred. Oh, yes. Done. All right. No money left. A magical no. device? No. We got I nothing can't left. One. And then monster speed, we're going to go with slow. slow. And uh, this is programmed on the keyboard. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons Simple of Appshy and Hellfire Warrior did not work for us is because right here, this command, when I did it live, I thought it was saying, do you want to enter the dungeon? I said yes, and it broke the game. When you have to put the number right. of the level. The dungeon level one. The other thing you didn't know is Temple of Apshai was dungeons one, two, three, and four. So you only had those four numbers as options. We're playing Hellfire Warrior, so we have five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And uh, check it out. There we go. So we're, we should go on to level five then? Yes, we can go to the lower reaches of Apshai, which is kind of like what we did in the last game, or level six is the Labyrinth, level seven is Vault of the Dead, or if you really want to push it, we go to level eight, the Plains of Hell. <laughs> I think uh, five is fine. <laughs> five is just fine, yes. Level five, entering Donjon. This one's programmed only on the keyboard, so uh, David will n not technically be playing himself, but I want you to see what this is like to play a role-playing game in 1980. First, this builds itself or every room you enter. So it's uh, doing top-down, building it as... as randomly as, generated? No, uh, no ro roguelike. It's, when you said level 5, it's loading that level. Uh, that, okay. that level 5 so There's a specific map. Now, here's how you play. You're using mostly the user interface. If we want to walk forward, you see how many steps. So if I push four, you'll notice right here on my shoulder, right down here, if I say four, it's going to move us four steps ahead. And now we're four okay. steps ahead. If we move one step ahead, we move one step. So as we, as we move around, though, it's real time. A monster could be coming at us right now. And it, as it moves, it's coming forward real time. So there is no turn base. It, it's a real time role playing game to call it an action role playing game is kind of iffy because as i move forward let's move four steps again and two steps and you can see there's a door at the top so if i move one step if i need to turn i have to hit l on the key oh wait no r on the keyboard to turn my character right so if i hit r he's now turned to the right 
Oh no. Yes. <laughs> and then I would move three steps forward to get to the door. And then now to open the door, I have to hit O on the keyboard to open the door. Now the door is open and I move forward with yes. <laughs> oh, two. There we go. Go. So we move in the room. And now that we're in the room, it's now going to build again, redraw everything for the room we're in. And that would be what it would be like playing a role playing game uh, in 1980, or at least one of the best, because there, there was other role playing games, but they just weren't uh, as good. But there you go. We have a giant centipede. You can see you're in the room. That's what's that's what's in, in the, the top right corner. And it's moving. You can yeah. see it coming at us. So we can go ahead and hit uh, attack. I can hit A. And there we go. Crunch. He hit our shield. shield. And then A. Crunch. And it struck us. And you look in the top right, our wounds. Oh, yeah, oh. you took a lot of damage. But we got him. So he's down. And Monster <laughs> is slain. And so that would be an example of the attack in a role-playing game from 1980. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah right we've only only place to go from here is up <laughs> yes all right so that was hellfire warrior one of the best role-playing games you could play at the time in 1980 uh our next game was mystery house another one that we rated h highly because of being one of the first if not the first graphic adventure game that you could play and uh the last time we booted this up and played it it was when we were trying to open the door, it, it was the classic go door. And that's how we actually moved into the right. house. <laughs> this one's all public domain now. It's all free. Anyone can check out and play Mystery House if they want to. Nice. I don't think it's on the Switch online store. You can't play it there, but uh, you, you can just download it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Boy, Sierra Online's icon there. <laughs> right old school this old. one also made the high res um uh, moniker so a lot of the video a lot of the other adventure games uh, that were text use the high res if they have a picture for the <laughs> adventure game there we go and yes text adventure game with graphics that is mystery house uh, one of the first, and I'm a, a huge Sierra fan, so that's why this one's up there. Our best of 1980. Did you hear Ken and Roberto Williams are working on something new? Yes, it is awesome. The 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 the, it, the, the news is Ken and Roberto Williams are working on a virtual reality colossal cave adventure. So if you're not familiar with Colossal Cave, it is the the very first adventure game for mainframe computers that started the whole text I, uh, text adventure genre. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't play it on the channel because we're not playing mainframe games, but that would be the grandfather. And uh, they're going to do a virtual reality colossal cave adventure. So you're going to use the Oculus or, or what, what have you and go in the cave and play the adventure game and virtual reality. So that'll be interesting. Great. <laughs> All right, our next game and our best of 1980. This is Hustle for the TI-99. And uh, this one's pretty cool. This is the first home release of the computer version of Hustle. And you'll get the idea when we boot this up. Check it out. This is... It's not a horse game, uh, even though the, the horse is hustling across the screen. I have no idea why they have horse there. If we do two players and play uh, Hustle, let's do normal... And we'll play novice. We won't go crazy fast. On your joystick, you move your snake up, down, left, and right. I'm in control of the white arrow, and David's in control of the blue. And as we move around the screen, we collect points. And we try to increase the length of our arrow. And get the other person like, to... Uh, Tron. Oh, yeah. Tr oh, well, uh, Tron was constantly drawing this one uh ours gets progressively long and long longer and longer so they they affectionately call these the snake games because you're a, you're a snake that goes around eating things but the very first one we played was in the 70s called hustle and you're just trying to get the other player to hit a wall yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is like early snake that's it yeah but you player Question mark. How many points is it? Nice. Oh, 
the 900 will make him go really long. So now he has the ability to probably block me in. Oh, he got it before me. Oh, no. <laughs> I keep hitting myself. Yeah, if you push back into yourself, then you die. <laughs> they didn't think that through. And that's how the arcade game was programmed, too. If you push back into yourself, then it counted as a loss. This is kind of cool. Yeah, th th like this is a lot. really fun to play. <laughs> if it was a Tron or Light Cycle game, it would just continue to grow the entire time. Oh man, this is so fast. I can't believe this. Oh! <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> I hate when I do that, too. All right, so that was Hustle, one of the best in 1980. After Hustle, we have Kamikaze in the arcade, which essentially was the same game we had played before. We rated, rated the same. Uh, it's just released as a different name in a different region. So we'll, we'll just skim by Kamikaze and go to the next one. Oh, this is awesome. This is Killer Comet. Uh, Killer Comet is the first game we played that is a shooter. You can shoot different directions and have a spaceship that you control at the same time. Bicentury released at some point in 1980. Uh, we'll put some quarters in and just get a feel of what Killer Comet's like. But look at the presentation. Look at the text. They kind of blow everything up, make it large. Uh, you can control a ship and you have uh, three different shots and a hyperspace like uh, asteroids. So you have a, a way to warp around. The, the, uh, you can warp around the screen different ways and you have shots that go in different directions. And it does take a little bit to get used to because you have to know what buttons for what shot and... Uh, once you realize what hyperspace is, you kind of use it like you do in Asteroids, where you want to get to a, another place really fast or as a get-out-of-jail-free card kind of thing. But the, 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 the idea that you could move a ship freely around the screen and you could shoot different directions is like the early, uh, an early Robotron uh, 2084. And I know with the controls, it feels a little strange because you, you, we, we, we could re remap them to play a, a little bit better, but uh, this is one of the best games that you could play in 1980, definitely. That's pretty <laughs> cool! Yeah. I like it. And we're doing just quick tastes because we, we have, have so many good games to go through. This one, I, I really wanted to show you. This is Lupin 3. Lupin, Lupin yes. the third. Did you see this one on the live stream when we played Lupin the third? I did not. I just know Lupin the Third from the anime. Yes, th this was the very first game we played uh, from a Japanese license on the channel. So this is, if not the first Japanese licensed uh, game you could play. It even has little yeah. cutscenes. Like it starts off uh, with you, awesome. Lupin. Uh, <laughs> 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 like when you play in your death animation, uh, they have uh, different things um, th that they incorporate in that we haven't seen before. But uh, go ahead and put some cool. qu quarters in. I'll explain how it works. You uh, are going to play as Lupin where you gather um, money at the top of the screen and try to get down to the bottom and cash it in. Are you playing now? I am not. Sorry. I was oh, mesmerized okay. by <laughs> the cutscene. I know. It's so cool. <laughs> I thought Pac-Man was the first with a cutscene. Nope. It was Lupin. So this is kind of like Pac-Man, actually. Yeah, top down. This did come out before uh, Puck-Man did. But we already saw a few other top down games you could play, and they have different enemies that uh, come after you. You got uh, a, a cop and a, and a watchman. Oh yeah, you have a magic button. That was that was your magic button. So it like brings you back in time a little bit. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh my gosh, so tight. You have the ability. You have, you have the ability to pick up more sacks of money, but you get heavier and slower. So if you just pick up uh, one at a time, you can do it conservatively. But this game also has hints of stealth. I know it's you. You, you, could, you could say Pac-Man had stealth, but no. This is you, you have patrolling enemies. This is the first time that you're having to use a little strategy to move past patrolling enemies. So there's like a hint of stealth here too. That's why it's one of the best games of 1980. That's close. Don't get me. Don't get me. Oh. oh. <laughs> and then they have a, a, a little death <laughs> I'm in <mission> jail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we played we play a lot more of this one, but Lupin the Third is one of the best of 1980 for sure. Yeah. So cool. And after that, we have Moon Quasar. 
This one's a shooter that, again, is pushing a few boundaries here and there. Uh, this is by Nichibusu, released October 1980. A lot of these were really copying the formula that Galaxian took on. And we gave Galaxian five stars for sure. This is still our four and a half range with Moon Quasar. Yeah, oh, this it's is, this game. This one's like Moon Cresta. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching you. Because you wanted to get the big ship, but it... It was so hard to get there. And play, uh, it's, it's right now in the different game modes, though, where you go from a shooter with one bullet, and then you get upgraded, and they have a game mode that allows you to dock with another ship to get upgraded. That's awesome. <laughs> Wait, they keep dodging. I know. They are quick. Another thing that's cool is the multiple shots. Uh, majority of the shooters, you only get, like, one shot per... Mm -hmm. Alright, here comes the, the refuel, so now you get your ship up into the other one by, I think, moving the joystick or thrusting? Uh, nothing's happening. It should be the same button. If it's not, it's just the joystick that you move to get up there. It's not moving. No! Yeah, I couldn't get anything to happen. Darn, that's all right. We'll, we'll see another one after this because Moon Quasar is just a slight variation of Moon Cr Moon Cresta. And after that, our next release is NASL Soccer for the Intellivision. This is um, a, a soccer game that you can play with, again, a lot of the complexity that we saw in boxing. We won't boot up and play this one because it takes a little bit of time for the setup, just like the other Intellivision games. But a huge release, lots of fun uh, for, for this one. Uh, same goes for basketball. NBA basketball for the Intellivision is way beyond anything we'd seen on the channel. And uh, this one's really pushing the limit for sprite size. Um, uh, look how many sprites are on the screen as well. Yeah. It, it looks like people. <laughs> it's really cool. There's another good really one. Really well done. And then we have another shooter. This is New York, New York. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. Let me boot this one up so you can get a taste of this one, David. This is by Gottlieb. One of the first that we've seen by them. And the shooter has a spinning wheel in the middle that uh, if you continue to shoot the wheel, you get more and more bonus points. But you have to keep the enemies on screen, which means you have to dodge their fire. So you look in the attract mode, they're starting a circle. And if you destroy the ships, the circle stops. But if you can get a handle on the circle and keep shooting the circle, you can get more and more bonus points. And it, it, it like a, adds it up, almost like a jackpot. And then if you, <laughs> if you complete the jackpot, then you get a whole lot more bonus points. So it's, it's, it's a, a game mode that's kind of a risk-reward thing going on. I see. And it does talk to you as well. Any game that talks to you gets high marks in 1980. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like close. You have to keep doing consecutive shots on the pinwheel in the middle. Yeah, it's hard to... There, it, oh, there you go. You got some of it, but then you have the more ships rotating around. And it causes all these bullets all over the screen. <laughs> That's... Yep. <laughs> all right. Yeah, pretty cool. So that's New York, okay. New York for the arcade. After that, our next release is Odyssey, the complete app venture. This one did something different for, well, first of all, title's different. <laughs> yeah. I, I still can't figure out what was going on. I found a magazine article where they talked about this game when it came out. They didn't say anything about the title, though. They, they just talked about the game itself, so I still have no idea why it's titled or misspelled. Doesn't does not make sense. But this one's a really cool adventure game where you have elements of role-playing, adventure, text, but then you also have graphics, and you can even see your character moving around the map in different places as... Uh, uh, landmarks this is right by robert c clardy 1980 once we get to show you the beginning you can see just how uh, big this is or uh, what this has and why this is one of the best of 1980 look at that high-res picture i mean uh it doesn't get any better than that in 1980 yeah <laughs> 
Hail Wanderer, art embarking on a new quest or continuing a prior one? New. New quest. And this is the world map. So they give you an island, a desolate island, somewhere in the Sargalo Sea. And there is our character. So it shows us our spot there. And then as we begin the game, you decide which direction you want to go. And you end up finding landmarks. And it draws the landmarks on the map. Like as huts or castles or dungeons. All that's found here on the, the beginning screen. Let's see if it allows me to select an option now. We did have a manual for this one, so we were able to see what to do. Here we go. You're in the jungle. You can see nothing but jungle in all directions. And what you do is, like a text adventure game, you say, okay, well, let's go uh, north. Or wait, let's go south. Oh, can I use the arrow keys? Oh, there we go. So you can look, use, drop, get, and then north, south, east, and west. So if I do... Um, Oh, did I do the accident? I pushed the wrong key. Let's go south. South. Am I not pushing the right button? So I'm pushing the right one. It, what, what's, what's supposed to happen, and what we did on the live stream, is as I moved around, it allowed us to uh, create landmarks, and you, you're, you're literally building this island as the adventure. And able to go into different things, and they give wow. you they give you choices like um, uh, what what items you want to bring or take with you, and then what things you can buy. And as you fight enemies, you collect uh, money, and you can use the money to to buy more equipment to take you to different places. So it's a it's a hybrid game of a graphic adventure game, uh, text adventure game, role playing game. Uh, it's like so many different things all in one. Uh, excellent game for the time. Well worth being the best of 1980 for for this one. Very cool. It's it's another one we could play for a very long time, uh, but yeah. we just we just don't have the time to play for a very long time. Here we go, another one, best of 1980. This is Radar Scope for the arcade, and David, this one I actually didn't have high hopes for this because this is notorious for being the oh I guess that one doesn't doesn't load. This is notorious for being the one that didn't sell well for Nintendo, and. This is the reason they had all these extra systems to set up for Donkey Kong. So they, uh, they, they converted Radar Scope into Donkey Kong. And so I wasn't expecting the, this to be very good, but it's a, it's a very good game uh, for how it plays. It just didn't sell well. Okay. Check out the sound effects and let me know if you hear anything interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Donkey Kong. Does it sound like Donkey Kong? So it was uh, Sh Shigeru Miyamoto and his team. Uh, mostly the team that took the uh, it was a, it was another company they hired to develop Donkey Kong, the, the the first one. And so they had to convert this as, as quickly as possible to another game. But I heard the bass line. I'm like, oh my gosh, this sounds just like Donkey Kong in the background. <laughs> the animations on this are amazing. Yeah, isn't it great? Yeah, I'm really into this. And it does different waves of ships. Um, the, 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 the big thing it has going for is the, the, the graphic design of the ships coming toward us in a three-dimensional space. Um, we also have uh, a damage meter. You don't just die first time. Uh, oh, really? I haven't been hit, so... Yeah. Too much oh, yeah, pro. Yeah. <laughs> Does the uh, level end? Oh, I guess we're depleting the forces at the top. That's right. Yeah, once it gets to the uh, end, then you get new enemies coming, and now they're starting to drop bombs, and the bombs are making your damage go down. So it's not your ship damage, it's like uh, the uh, your base. So you have to protect your base and keep your base from... <laughs> and it, like, flips the screen on the death. Okay, cool. I like this. <laughs> Yeah, that one is one of the best in 1980. Honestly, I didn't do it because of the Donkey Kong. I, I was actually going to score this way lower until I played it myself and I, I really enjoyed it. But so cool that little Easter egg of, hey, is that Donkey Kong in the, in the background? <laughs> yep, it's, it has the same probably sound card. Yeah, right. And our next one, best of 1980, is Rip Off for the arcade. It's called Rip Off because you're supposed to destroy the ships and not get ripped off because they're, they're grabbing your supplies and trying to get off the screen. 
the game ends when all the supplies have been ripped off the screen. That's how you get a game over. So it's really not about you getting shot or you can die as many times as you want, but the, the game over happens when everything's off the screen. And I think we played this uh, a few episodes ago. This was near near the end. So David's now in control of the ship. Uh, he just he has to shoot everything around before they get to... Oh, yeah, and they can't shoot him, but he just re re responds. It all depends on protecting the cargo. Don't let the cargo get ripped off. That's all you got to do. Sound effects are excellent on this one. Uh, graphics are pretty rudimentary, but we, we, we zoomed this in because we did have artwork we can see around the outside. I wanted to get a better view of the vector-based graphics, but um, uh, gameplay's frantic, frenet uh, frenetic. Like, you can move yourself around. <laughs> oh, come on. You can also commit suicide with the, Fine. like, ships. Like, you can uh, run into them to get them to, 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 before they can get off the screen. And as more and more cargo goes away, it increases the sound thumping in the background. It gets yeah. more and more intense. Whoa, they just came out of nowhere. It was like highway three. robbery. Yeah. <laughs> Get back here. <laughs> oh, that was a good ah. Oh, man, he was tailing you. No, go! And you're the Boy, last controls one. Controls are a little tough. Oof. There you go. Go! Get it! No! Oh. <laughs> they ripped me off. They ripped me off. And that's, that's how most of the time it ends when you, when you finish that one. All right, after Rip Off, Samurai was one of our best releases of 1980. And here's why. This was released in March of 1980. And this is developed by Sega. This is a the first example we can see of a hack and slash where you're playing in a, in, a, in a field able to move around as a samurai and you have a sword to take out the enemies. So you're able to, to, to move around freely from, I'm not even going to call it a side view. It's more of a, um, a like a three-quarter perspective, I guess. Obviously, the characters are still two-dimensional and the sound isn't emulated. But, I mean, look at this. It's like the, the first beat-em-up. You're, you're, you're yeah. trying to kill multiple enemies on the screen at, 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 at the same time. Doing something new. Are you also tie before. in one hit. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> you must be good samurai. And also watch the top of the screen. There's like a, a ninja baby dropping ninja stars on you. That that was the one that always yeah. got me when I played it. Yeah, look out! And, and if you go into the edges, oh. these guys with claws uh, coming at you like you're in an arena fighting fighting bad guys. No one to let me out. And if you get far enough, you, there's even a boss. That you can fight. Let's see if the boss. Yeah, there's the boss that shows up, and the uh, oh, you got him. Nice. <laughs> cool. There we go. So excellent game for 1980 because of the the concept. Uh, someone's first idea to play 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 this way. After yeah, Samurai. Really cool. Yeah, Star Castle we played uh, in the, the 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 last episode, but th this one is. Another vector-based game that has uh, multiple shields surrounding the Star Castle. And as you, you play, you're trying to penetrate to get to the Star Castle and uh, destroy the shields while you're getting attacked by homing missiles at the same time. But it has similar gameplay to rip off and asteroids as one ship that flies around. Excellent game uh, for the time. And then Steelworker. Oh, man. Uh, Steelworker. That this one, cool yeah, very cool idea. Had no idea this came out before Lemmings. It is a puzzle game. You're just uh, a steel workers randomly walking across the screen, and you you're building up uh, platforms for them to walk across. And then after that, we also have Supernova, uh, which was a home computer release. And I'll, I'll boot this up to show you. This is a TRS-80 action game, and we've seen a few from Big Five that are good, but this is asteroids that you could play <laughs> on your computer and wow. uh asteroids of course was um vector based in the arcade there's no way you could have played anything like like that but they're, they're using what they could on the trs 80 which is supposed to be text only check this out i know it says two players but essentially you have to uh 
it, it is an asteroids. It game. is asteroids. Yeah, you're flying around as asteroids. This it blew me away that this was possible. Look at this. <laughs> wow, that is cool. <laughs> and you're right. It's it. It's just it's the game asteroids. Yeah. Uh, we haven't said this too much on the channel, but graphics aren't everything. We really go for play control. Um, the, the, how does the game play? And this game played way too good for a home computer game. Uh, so this is one of the best of, of the games you could have played in 1980. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> Too crazy, right? Mm-hmm. All right, after that, we have Tennis, which we won't be able to play together, but this is a handheld electronic, one of the best handhelds you could have played at the time, and it actually runs for us, but it is a two-player tennis game. You put uh, one half of the handheld in someone else's hand and the other half. So if we were on the bus sitting together, you could play one side and I could play the other. And the way it works is when you send the ball over to the side, you have six buttons, six different ways you can return. And when you push that button, you're sending the ball to the other side. And the other person has to match your, your button. So um, keep in mind, this is the age of game and watch. And so this is uh, giving you six buttons on either side of the controller to make selections for your tennis to play in it. So amazing uh, tennis game, best handheld, one of the best you could play at the time in 1980. That Very is cool. tennis. Yeah, really cool. What was the first handheld you remember playing, David? Um, I may have played Game Boy first. It was a hand-me-down. Hand-me-down? Game, Game Boy? Mm -hmm. And to put it in the perspective of what we're seeing, this is 1980. Game Boy doesn't come out until nine years later. Yeah. So we're that far away from Game Boy. And uh, this is what you'd experience in the palm of your hand. It's just crazy. Another amazing game, best of 1980, was Video Pinball. This is on the uh, Atari 2600. And uh, for uh, pinball games with the, the physics involved, this was top tier. I believe this had a two-player mode. Did this play two-player? Let me see really quick. If we look at game variations, what was... There we go. Game two is a two-player version. Uh, takes a turn, one ball at a time. Okay, it's not simultaneous play. That's why I wanted to see if it was simultaneous, yeah. but it is not. It is a one-player pinball game, but very, very well done on the Atari home console. And our last four-and-a-half-star game of the best of 1980 is Zork. Yes, Zork. Is this the original Zork? Well, the original Zork was mainframe, uh, was on mainframe. Okay. So yeah. this was the first release you could play at home. And it's so uh -huh. big that they had to split it into three different games. So like the original Zork on mainframe was massive. So this is the first of the trilogy just because they couldn't fit everything on it. But Zork is amazing. Z Zork is not just a text adventure game where you're deciding and making do I want to go in the house and select something? Zork is a, like an open world text adventure game where you're able to go to different places and uh, cultures. And there's uh, uh, it's a role playing game at the same time where you're you're a character and you decide. You, you, so it, it, it is massive. Uh, so four and a half stars for sure for Zork on the TRS-80. So we won't boot this one up because uh, uh, but I will say this. The text parser is more complex than any other text or adventure games we played thus far on the channel. And that's why Zork is the best of 1980. Okay, so here we go, David. This is our five-star game. So these are the, uh, the, the, the the top tier of 1980. Our first one is, oh yes, Adventure. Released September 1980. And we'll just do Adventure 1. Go ahead and push start on that. Because there's three different modes. But you're essentially a pixel moving around the screen. But wow, what a game. It is not just on one screen. you got multiple screens. You can follow. Oh, gosh. And now we got the dragon already chasing you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing a, an adventure game that we've seen on computers. But the adventure is you know one high-res picture. Or the adventure is text that you're reading. Not here. This is an adventure that you're experiencing. You're playing and acting out. Um, and the, the manual helps a lot with what, what all the symbols and everything is. But um, th th this is above and beyond anything uh, th that we've seen on the home console space. So adventure is 
Incredible. One of the best of cool. 1980. Yeah, all the different items you can play as, too. I'm pretty sure I just glitched through the wall. No, that's your bridge. Uh, th that bridge allows you to glitch through the, any wall. So if you um, uh, push the bu uh, red button, or push the same button, I guess. When you let go of it, you drop it, and now you can wow. pass through any, <laughs> yeah, any, any, uh, uh, any wall you want. Cool. <laughs> so many cool things I can say about adventure and um, how well it was programmed, how they got this to function. Because the Atari Twenty Six Hundred was not designed for this. Uh oh, Dragon is gonna get you, dude. Oh, he's <laughs> he didn't get swallowed. I don't believe it. <laughs> but you, you are getting chased. From screen to screen, check that out. That's yeah, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> Someone in the chat was like, "This is refreshing that Casey Club Curry has not played this." We've ch checked it out or dabbled with it in like the video game museum, but yeah. playing the original game and having multiple uh oh oh there you go in the stomach. You can wiggle around, but you can't get out. <laughs> 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 you even drop your key. I'm, I'm dropping the key inside the belly. Awesome. So that was Adventure. Our five-star game for 1980. Moving on with our best of 1980, we have Akalabeth, World of Doom. Now, we have played another role-playing game. This is the other one you could have seen. I thought the very first role-playing games were Ultima and Wizardry, and I was wrong. There's, there's more role-playing games out there than I thought. And uh, this one is one of the big ones created by Lord British. The way you play this one, it starts off with a very, kind of a limited character creation. But the, the, the role-playing experience allows for first-person dungeon crawling for the very first time. Which was ahead of its time. Yeah. It does take a long time to load, though. So let me get some fast-forward. Oh, it worked. Sweet. All right, so the, the lucky number is just what seed you want to play on. So what's your lucky number, David? <laughs> we'll do two. Two. What level of play? Well, we're doing level one. And then it just gives you random qualities, and you can say yes or no. Like, if I say no, uh, it just keeps randomizing. So you just keep rolling the dice. Those look good. Looks good. We'll say yes. And then you only get to be a fighter or a mage. Well... Considering my wisdom is high, let's go, mage. Mage, yes. And then you start off in the shop, and it asks which items you want to buy. You pick uh, your items, and the big thing... Too many items to buy. <laughs> I know, they got, what is it, rapier, axe, shield, bow, magic amulet, and then um, uh, the big thing is food. When I first played this, I didn't buy any food, and I died. So you have to buy food, because every time you walk, it cons you consume food. But the let's, let's get a rapier and then a few things of food. Oh, mages can't use rapiers. Well, then just get food. 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 Let's just buy a bunch of food. Yeah, there you go. Oh, we only have seven gold left, though. How much is the magic amulet? It's too much. Oh, it we is too much. We could afforded it. Oh, wow. Yeah, because we started with so low of money. Okay, we'll, we'll just buy uh, some more food and then quit. Bye. Welcome to Akalabeth, World of Doom. And this is not a roguelike. It is the same. Well, the, the overworld map is different every time. So whenever we begin, the that always is going to be randomized. They they have mountains that you can't cross. And the, the, the point of the game is you're supposed to find the castle first where Lord British is. You go in the castle. He gives you one quest. I'm serious. Just one. He's like it'll kill. It's like kill a three-headed dragon, or or find the, an orc and kill an orc, or something to that effect. But that's all you have to do in the game is complete the one quest, and then you, you you're done. Okay. No way. I can't believe we started here. So um, the the way it works is you start first. The the castle's right there. That X. I've never started this close to the castle, so we got really good luck. But when you want to go, uh, uh, wait. Is the controls up? North. Hold on. Consulting the manual. A Calabeth manual. The annuls of a Calabeth. There you go. Movement. Uh, west. Oh, there you go. That's why. North is enter. 
South is backspace. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? And then you use uh, X and A to get through things. All right, so if you want to go up, we go there. And we want to go left. There. And we want to go inside. Yes, so we went inside the castle. Welcome, peasant, into the halls of the mighty Lord British. Heron, thou might choose to dare battle with the evil creatures of the depths for great reward. What is thy name, peasant? Want to go with Davy? Sure. Davy. <laughs> Dost thou wish for grand adventure? Now, I know you're thinking, I'm just going to say no, right? And if you say no, it actually crashes the game. The game closes <laughs> if you say no. <laughs> so basically, yes. <laughs> yes. So if you say yes, then he goes, good. Thou shalt try to become a knight. And then he gives you your first task. And you kill, oh, you got to go get a mimic. So we have to go kill a mimic. And uh, the way this works is you go find dungeons. There's various dungeons scattered around the overworld. And then you go down in the dungeon and you fight different enemies. And you get money. You can go to towns and use that money to buy more equipment and so forth. And then eventually you can finish the quest, which is kill the mimic. So there we go. So we're on the overworld map. And then as you, you just move yourself around to there. Oh, yeah, we can't go past the mountains. That's right. But you can go north. And you notice it's redrawing it every time. So we're, we're now going away and we have mountains at the top. We can't pass those. So then we go to the left and we just, you're looking for the dungeon because it's random. And every time we make a step, we're losing food. Okay. Which is the, the mistake I made. And this right here is a town. So that symbol is the town. If we wanted to go inside the town, we could do that. Oh, and there we go. The X is the dungeon. So when you get to the dungeon, you go over the top of the dungeon, and then when you go down into the dungeon, oh yeah, it's loading the dungeon. This is where it gets interesting. Oh wow, first person. Yes, first person dungeon crawling. Same controls you moved in the overworld map, but now whenever you move like up, it builds the next part and you move to the next one. And you move to the next one, and then that's how you would control, what? Oh, it was a thief, no! The thief stole our food. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to open the door. I love it. You just walk into it uh, to go to the next one. And you move past that. And this is one of those games that you'd have to draw the map to, to play it correctly. But um, you can see there's a, a treasure chest at the end of the hallway. And then you can even go down deeper into deep, uh, farther depths. But the enemies get harder. But this would be the, 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 the appeal. The first person experience of the dungeon crawl. Yeah, very cool. All right, so that is a Calibeth, one of the best, if not the best, role playing games you could have played in 1980. Oh yeah, and also in 1980 is Asteroids Deluxe. Why is Asteroid Deluxe a five star game? I mean, look at it; it's incredible. <laughs> was, was this when Asteroids came out? Asteroids was out in '79. Okay. So this was. So what made this deluxe? Uh, Deluxe added um, the the overlay, the shield system, uh, more sprites on screen, and there's also homing enemies that come in after you. So okay. it's um, uh, no, it wasn't the color vector graphics. They didn't have that at the time. But it is one of the best, if not the best, games for 1980. And this one, I want to boot this up with you. This is way ahead of its time. This is Atari Soccer, released April 1980. When we play this together, it's a top-down view soccer game with artificial intelligence for other players at the same time. Oh. So let's put a ton of quarters in on this one and see what happens. <laughs> How many credits can we have? Okay, so I am in the uh, top right as the white soccer player, and are you bottom left? Is that you? Yep. Wiggling and wobbling? Okay, so yeah, David's in the bottom left as, as, as other soccer player, and I can't move in the circle until... He, he boots up. So I can run after him, go for the steal. I don't seem to think... Yeah, we don't have any... Um, <laughs> you got it. We don't have any buttons because it's programmed with a trackball when it came out. The The goalie is uh, uh, artificial. Oh, nice. And you can see we have three dimensions scaling of the ball as it comes on the top of the screen. And this, this would be one of the best sports games you could... Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think they have the button for for the kick. Yeah, there we go. And to, to get around the goalie is tricky because the the, the goalie is just doing the, uh, automatically guarding the goal 
Oh, he got it. Nice. Got him. <laughs> All right. I think we can stop there and say I won. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> one zip. That's the usual soccer score, right? Okay, so this one, uh, definitely five stars. Can't believe that this came out in 1980. Uh, the black and white is still typical uh, for arcade games, but the way this played and control and the top-down view, incredible. After Atari Soccer, this one we won't boot up um, and play because it is a handheld baseball game. And, David, this is – you can – play nine innings of baseball in the palm of your hand. It's it's on the uh, M Milton Bradley Microvision where it has interchangeable cartridges. Mm -hmm. Incredible. I don't know how they did it. And then our next one, the best of 1980, is Battle Zone. Battle Zone is good. I know the play control is uh, tricky for some people. I know sometimes it can be brutal, but this is the first example of virtual reality that some people even said, you're in the... In, in the tank, and you're able to control in the, in, in the 3D space. You're driving around in 3D space. First above. person perspective was just mind-blowing back yes. then. Yes, yes, incredible. Okay, here we go. This one's five stars. This is called the Black Sage. This is on the Apple II, and I want to play this to give everybody an experience of what this is, uh, what this feels like, because it's a different take on the role-playing game. After we yeah, played Hellfire Warrior. You're playing this one. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to check this one out. So here we go. Press any key to continue. I didn't even know this one existed. I still haven't found the manual to this, if it exists. This is a, like a genre of its own because it's a role-playing game that is just choice-based. It's not action. It's not text, though. It's uh, It's something different and trying something different. Polyversa Technologies, The Black Sage. <laughs> After we wait for the uh, dragon to breathe fire. Let's see if we can speed it up a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, so I like this. Um, if you haven't gone over the rules that were enclosed with the game, then I suggest you do that now before you play. You don't need to know all the rules, but you should have a good understanding of the general overview because this game is the first example we've seen on the channel with humor. It is freaking hilarious. Okay, let me roll you a character, David. Do you like this character? Yes or no? That's fine. Now, just for namesake, we're going to say no. We're going to say David does not want to play with this character. Watch what the game does. Well, tough. That is what you get. And you take two off charisma for not liking yourself. Hitting the key. <laughs> <laughs> you must enter a name for your character. You want to do Davi again? Mm hmm. Davi. Though the computer keeps track of everything, you might want to keep your own personal record of things. And that is true for most of the time, these games in 1980, you'd have to write them down. Remember, you may not have a hafted weapon and a shield both. Uh, there's durability ratings for their weapons in this game, and there's also strength ratings, uh, ratings for your weapon. It's time to go shopping. You're giving a, given a thousand gold pieces. Uh, first, you want to buy a magical money pouch and a one dice dagger for a hundred gold pieces. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you may buy a sword, half the weapon, shield, armor, magic spells, inventory. And when I first played this, I didn't know like if it was going to need food, like in a Calabeth or not. But uh, we'll just go down from the beginning. So buying a sword first. Bingo, which one do you want? Right, I remember there were all these different kinds of weapons and things. Crazy amount. It was a crazy amount of weapons. <laughs> um, I'll do cutlass. Cutlass. You bought a cutlass. Hit any key. And then we can't buy a sword and half the weapon, so we'll go to shield next. And then which shield? Uh, normal. Normal. You bought a normal shield. And for armor, there's uh, since you are a commoner, you may only purchase leather armor. There's two types. Total set or gambeson. Uh, we'll do the gambeson. Gambeson. You bought leather armor gambeson. And then magic spells. These are great. And uh, you only have so much money, but uh, the, the spells are what a blast, wherefore art thou, seal shut, and detect magic. Let's get a detect magic. Okay. A lot of detect magic. Yeah. 
And then you can look at your inventory, which just shows us what we got. So there's okay. everything that you have in your inventory. And then uh, we leave now. By the way, you still, have four, you still have 460 gold pieces. So do you want to buy more before we That's go? That's fine. All Let's right, so go. We, go. we go. You are equipped with the best you can be considering limitations of money and strength? <laughs> yes. In other words, are you sure? <laughs> do you want to go on an adventure? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, here we go. You now have found your way to the Black Sage's castle. You will shortly go inside. There are many ways to get out of the castle, the front door not being one of them. Beware one of many doors. They will lead you into a room, but not out. Good luck. And then this builds randomly. It's generating the, the rooms that you can go to and select and play. And one of the reasons I wanted to play this instead of just looking at the gameplay is you can't just see this with a screenshot or a, a, someone playing it for a brief moment. This is one of those games that it's way too complex for the time. Oh, one last thing. The Black Sage, uh, Sage spends all their time in one room. So you might come out of this adventure alive. I will give you a clue to the room they're in. <laughs> a figure in skating plus Bo Derek. And I think we got that clue last time. I know what they mean now. They're talking about eight because it's got to be a figure eight in skating. Uh -huh. And then whatever Bo Derek's number was whenever this game came out in 1980. It's probably his jersey because every room in the Black Sage has a number assigned. Oh, it was ten. <laughs> thanks for thanks for thanks for doing the math, Arcade Jeff. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't have a lot graphically going toward it, but uh, the player starts off in one room. So David's going to be in, uh, I think it's the, the room on the far left, and then each one of these are randomized with numbers. So the Black Sage is in whatever room is. 8 plus Bo Derek's number, but uh, the first room's the same. You're in a large entry hall. There's a large ogre sleeping across the room, and now David gets to select what does he do in this room with the ogre. Sl slit the throat. Slit the throat. You have to make a dexterity saving roll. Great. <laughs> that's my highest value. And sadly, I have the keyboard, so I'm going to be blamed for a terrible roll when I hit the button. But you made it! And because I you made it, <laughs> you get 24 experience points, hitting the key, and you kill the ogre. You get 30 experience points and 10 mithrail pieces. Perfect. Sweet. Now you decide which room you want to go to. Uh, room 30, 29, or 16. 16. Okay, so there it is. We were in room one, and then it's going to move our little symbol. There we go. That shows you where room 16 is. In here, there's two people fencing with foils. Foils are blunted, thrust-only weapons. Who wrote this game? They put us against something else. Have you ever heard of the term foils? <laughs> no. Let's uh, talk to them. All right, let's talk to them. Make a charisma saving roll. <laughs> well, that's not good. Yeah, is our charisma low? Oh no, you didn't make it. They have nothing to say to you, so we, our charisma wasn't high enough. Okay. And then after that room, we just move on to the next one. So you want to go to 21, back to room 1, or room 5? Uh, We'll do 21. 21. So you move from 16, and it's, it's late, it's uh, marking on the map and showing you where you actually went. Yeah. And here you see a large praying mantis eating a fellow traveler who's still alive. What do you do? Um... I guess I would yell sacrilege. <laughs> All right, we're yelling sacrilege. What the hell good is that going to do to you? Now you're forged to fight the menace. Well, you get to <laughs> fight the menace. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to probably die. Oh, yeah. Here's the fight. Uh, you can do fight or run. Is basically I'm going to run. Okay, so we're going to run. You made it out of the room. And again, that's All random right. too. That's cool. All right, so now you can go to back to room 616. Room 13 or room 6? Let's do 13. 13. So you move yourself around, and you see that's where room 13 is. And now we're, I see a low-level commoner standing in front of you, coming through a door. <laughs> I'm going to laugh. Let's laugh at the commoner. The commoner is also laughing. Good grief. That commoner is you. You're looking into a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. The, the, the room is over after you make that decision and you move on. So, 
Uh, that is essentially what the Black Sage is. After we did the live stream, I went and played this again. I, I never even found the Black Sage, but I just had a, a blast going room to room because this of how well like it's written. So much fun because <laughs> yeah, it's more of just like choose your own adventure story. Yeah, that's cool. So cool. And that is one of the best games of 1980. Now, I guess it depends on who's asking, but as far as role-playing games go, it's not technically a full-on role-playing game, but you are taking a, a role, and you, uh, you you are playing as a some, somebody, and you are making charisma rolls and luck rolls and stuff like that. So, it, it, Foils are swords and fencing. That's what I yeah. thought it sounded like. Yeah. All right, and this is uh, Cheeky Mouse, which is an excellent arcade game. I, I can't believe we had another video game that was from this perspective, of the side view, where you could... Um, uh, play. Oh, yeah, I this. yeah, it, it, it where you you're playing as a, a, a from a two D perspective somebody else, and I know there's no jumping, but this is the very one of the very first games we've ever seen that was taken from this side view. Excellent, excellent game for the time. All right, and then we have Fracas. Oh man, this one's uh incredible. This is a, a roguelike that um th this allows you to play with multiple people in a party but you have the freedom to go to separate locations in the roguelike. So uh, uh, th th this one is uh, five stars because of, I can't believe someone programmed this in 1980, considering everything else we've seen. All right, so we want return, and we'll just pop this up to a little bit faster. There we go. Crank this sucker up, because it does take time to load the role-playing game for it there we go all right so here we go you can uh have eight characters so we can play the game with eight different people so if you want to add a character we say yep and then i'll put me in as chrono and then you do an alliance level two i'll be alliance level three and then start at the beginning. Yeah, I'll do beginning. And then let the computer create the character. Yes. So you can actually, you can actually go in and fix all the stats. So you can, you know, make a specific character, and say yeah. I'll just say yes. Accept this character. And then what armor do you want? We're going five, of course. And then now you want to add another character. So we'll say yes. And then we can make this character Davi. And then what alliance do you want Davi to be? I'll do three. Three, right down the middle. And then start at the beginning or put yourself somewhere, somewhere random? Random. Random. Sweet. And then do you want the computer to create the character or you go through yeah. all the stats? So, yeah. Because then you just spend a lot more time deciding what you want. So, we'll say yes. Yes. And then armor uh, zero through four. One. One. And then there it is. And then you can add up to eight. So eight people. So we'll just say two for right now. We'll say uh, no, we don't add any more characters. And then we'll do game speed. Let's do fast. Um, okay, here we, go. here we go. So it's a turn-based game. The way this starts is it's a top-down roguelike. And right now it has my choices. So I'm Chrono and I'm the, I'm the green dot. So I can run, dodge, attack, rest, retreat, and then move on to the next room. So if I say run... I want to move around the room, and you can see it gives us our con controls of how to move around, or how okay. we uh, move in different directions. So if I want to go up, up, and it shows my movement that I have next, and if I want to go, <laughs> the door is stuck, so I can't go in that door. And then now we've randomly moved to uh, Davi, and Dav Davi's in a room with a headless horseman, and the headless horseman's turn is up now, and it's moving Gosh. across the screen, and it went right for Davi, and now Davi is right next to the headless horseman with two other enemies in this large room, because I guess you said random, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm probably going to die, but I'll attack. All right, we'll attack, and then you'd attack which direction, so he went down below you, right? So we'll do that. I think he's above me. Oh, that's right, he's above you, so we'll do one. 
and then bumped into the headless horseman oh and it said you missed the attack but see it's a turn-based role-playing game so that switches back to to me so if you played with eight people this would be one of the best like hot seat games you could have played role-playing wise yeah. created different characters and everyone just switches and decides what choices they want and it's a roguelike so as soon as you die then you know you, you move on because the game's uh, the game's over but everyone else can continue to play as long as they can until you're, you've, you've survived or finished the game very cool yeah so cool great idea how did they do it i don't know it's it's too good all right that was yeah that was fracas and then moving on with our best games of 1980 we have the trilogy of the galactic saga all three of these games are too massive it's it's three games that in, involve galactic conquest Oh. I can't believe that it's a, it's a space trading game with uh, galaxies, planets, star systems, way way too way too big for 1980. That's why it's on the it's on our list. And after that, we have King and Balloon. King and Balloon is the best of 1980 because of the formula that uh, how well it plays. It's a different style shooter that's doing something a little bit different, and and just plays so well. And then we have Miner. Is another one of our best of 1980. This is the first example of a digging game uh, that you can actually go underground and play uh, and, and explore. Uh, uh, and it's on the Commodore Pet. A amazing game. Uh, one of the best of 1980. And then, oh man. Oh yeah. Man. Missile Command. Best of 1980 for sure. And then after that is the extremely amazing Moon Cresta. Which uh, is was co already copied. We already played one copy on this list. The one that I that I saw you play. That's right. <laughs> and yes, Pac-Man was here in 1980. That is the best, if not uh, the, the the best game you could have played. Most lists actually say this is the best game of 1980. I would agree. Pac-Man released October 26, 1980. We also have Puck-Man on the list too. Because that was released earlier in the same year. Okay. But man, classic. Great game. Another thing to point out is the game is constantly making sounds. And that is... That, that's one of the qualities of a really good arcade game right now. Keeping you engaged. Oh man, they were, they were on point. <laughs> I remember in school, I learned about AI through this game because this was so way ahead of its time for AI in the time. Do you happen to remember what the AI was programmed for the ghosts? Yeah, there's a ghost that's programmed to go ahead of you. One program to follow behind you. One that kind of just goes in random directions. And then one that go tries to go to where you currently are. Oh, like whatever point you were at. Right. Yeah, so the idea is they try to trap you. And the different AI all kind of work together to make that happen. So cool. Great game. Oh, yeah. Excellent game. All right, we'll, we'll move on to our next one. After Pac-Man. I consider that one, like, that's top tier for sure. Okay, oh, this yeah. one is uh, uh, another blowaway amazing game. We don't have a game snapshot of this. Check this out. This is called Phantom 5. This is by Sirius Software for the Apple II. And this is programmed by uh, someone named uh, Nasir Gabelli. Did not Lotus up? All right, let me try it one more time. Does it not come that way? Oh, okay, I missed it the other way. We tried it two different ways. I think we did before. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is one of those games that we don't use the term hidden gem on Chronologically Gaming. I, I would call this game a diamond in the rough because the no one has talked about this look what is happening right now on the screen phantoms 5 is a scrolling a vertical scrolling shooter 
And so uh, this already blew me away, just the title screen, I mean, uh, of what we're seeing. Yeah. But uh, ch check this out when you want to play the game. <laughs> Not only having all of those colors on the screen, but having them move. Yeah. It is wizardry. Uh, Nasir is a very popular programmer. You would probably know him best, David, as he was the main programmer for the original Final Fantasy on the Famicom. Oh. They contracted him out because he's that good. But here's the game. I'm playing the game right now. I'm playing. And I love that they made it so that the graphics can be on top because of the way it's programmed. The foreground uses every other line and the background uses every other line. And so they'll never intersect. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And look at the death animation. Now, the, the, wow. the uh, Apple II really didn't have like a crazy good sound chip, but um, uh, I'm, I'm, I know this one did have sound. We're just not able to emulate the sound. But the fact that this is in the arcades, we haven't even seen a scrolling shooter. The scrolling yeah. would be those colorful star fields, but this is a full mapped background that's scrolling uh, happening in the background. It's and a graphical marvel. Yeah, it's it's insane. So this is why this is one of the best games that you could have played in 1980, even though it was wow. tricky for me to run. But that is uh, incredible. Yeah, Phantoms 5 for the Apple II. After that, our next best game of 1980 is Phoenix. Incredible shooter. The, this one, again, is pushing the boundaries of what you can do with a shooter in the arcades, how it's, how it's played, music, sound effects, and so forth. It is... Yep amazing and then there we go the the first release which was puck man the before they named it to pac-man i don't know why they would have renamed it i mean wh what's wrong with puck man no one could replace the the p with any other letter right david oh <laughs> and after that we have rally x are you familiar with this one in the arcades i remembered watching you play this this looks i i mean i've never played it but Pretty cool. right, let me let me show you the play control. This is a huge release. Not only is it um, five star because it um, uh, the the graphics and color are are popping. You have a radar display on the right side, and the the play control is so smooth and and plays well. And it's a uh, a multi screen game. That's another thing that pushes this way beyond because the, the Pac Man was just one screen, one map. This is multiple maps, and it's able to scroll around. And you know that there's something beyond the boundary of the screen. That if you continue playing past that, you can you can see something that's next. Yeah, that's right. And this is the game with the S flag. That's it. Yeah, with the uh, they had on uh, um, Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the idea of moving past the screen is so big. There's there's not many games that do that. Yeah, it's a pretty big map. And they I like that they give you the radar so you don't get lost. Yeah, it's awesome. So cool. Love Rally X. One of the best games of 1980. After that, we have Sea Battle. And uh, I'm just going to pop this in really fast. This is Intellivision, and the complexity of Intellivision is there. But this is... A five-star game because it is a real-time strategy game on a home console. The very first we've ever seen. <laughs> yes. Okay, so for Sea Battle, I don't like the game Battleship. No, no, no. That, that would be that would be too easy. Uh, this one is uh, before we start the game. Yeah, we just. Uh, you, you, you select which ships you want to deploy, and uh, the first player is going to start in the top right of the screen in that little bay, and the, uh, the other player is going to start in the bottom uh, the bottom left of the screen in that bay. And you okay. pick what ships you want, and you move your ships. Yeah, I can see you've selected something, or it must be doing the attract mode, I think. And the little ship symbols for what you select are over here on the keypad. So you can select like aircraft carrier, a battleship, destroyer, sub, and so forth. And then after you pick the ships you want, you place them around the map. Like you actually move the pieces and you place them where you want. And then the two players, when they decide to go, you start moving your ships and trying to get the other person um, 
to start a, a, ba a battle. And when it starts the battle, it goes into a, sh a closer screen where you're actually able to attack and uh, and do real time attacking on on each other. Wow. Yeah, it, 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 I could have spent more time with this on the live stream, but this was an amazing game. Uh, the best of 1980. <laughs> there you go. You can see a little bit that's being played there. But they, we're not able to go too much into it because we're already so far over time. I wanted to finish up the rest of 19, uh, the best of 1980. But but this one is another game that could, could you could spend hours and hours playing this one. It is it is excellent. And that's, that's Sea awesome. Battle for the Intellivision. After that one, we have Space Encounters for the arcade, uh, taking off the um, trope of Star Star Wars with yeah. the trench run. It does look like that. But uh, plays well and has a great arcade experience to it, so that's an incredible game. Oh, and this one is the home release of Space Invaders. Five stars for what it did for Atari. And uh, if you look at the box, I believe the box has it, right? Yeah, 112 video games inside of it, or game modes that you could play on this. Uh, wow. Yeah. The best, or one of the best games you could play on a console in 1980. And then after that, we have Space Zap, the, uh, one of the best arcade games you could ever play uh, for, for the time. Incredible. And then uh, finally, our last of the best of games, the very first video game that talked to us. This is Stratovox, which uh, is another shooter but it has a rescue system uh, uh, kind of in play. That's right. Oh, man, and the colors, sound effects, so so good. Jeez. And we have, like, a... <laughs> yeah, brutally hard, right? <laughs> yeah. And the the players that you capture, you know, you, if you save them, they can you, you can bring them back. Yeah, their bullets are so fast. <laughs> but we gave five stars mainly because it's the very first game that had vo full voice talking. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. This is all right, great. so that was Stratovox, and that would close out all the releases that we've decided to to choose for the the best of 1980 and yeah and with that uh it, it was an amazing evening but uh that would be all the the games that we played from 1980 they are done and we just played and checked out all the the best games of 1980 i i couldn't ask for a, a better guest thanks so much uh david for being here i really appreciate it yeah, man. Uh, who knows? Well, uh, who knows when we're going to get done with 1981, but uh, w when we can, I hope you have a good one. This is a, a great send off and a great evening. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching, and we will catch you all next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central. So join us and let us know if we miss any games along the way. This video would not be possible without RetroArch and LaunchBox. Please tell your friends there's some crazy guy out there trying to play every single video game. You can always check out Chronologically Gaming on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We will catch you next time.